another episode of Jay Leno's Garage. We have a very special car here today, a car with so many details on it, I think you'll, uh, you'll be pretty amazed. It is a 1948 Chrysler Town & Country. It is a Woody. This is much more upscale Woody, obviously, than the Fords and the Depot hacks of the 30s. Uh, this was a very expensive car when it was new. Uh, it looks stock, but this is one of the best resto mods I have ever seen because it's done exactly the way I like it. It looks bone stock from the outside. Even though this front end looks like it's been extended, that's exactly the way it is. Uh, the 17-inch wheels might be a bit of a giveaway, but everything else looks pretty much as it might have looked back in 1948. But uh, I think you'll be real surprised <laughs> at uh, what's under the hood of this vehicle, as well as the suspension and the entire drivetrain. But let's meet Gary Meadows. Gary is the uh, owner of this car. Gary, come on in. All right. How you doing? Doing fantastic. Now, some of you might recognize Gary. He's <laughs> one of the, uh, the, well, you're the founder of the Good Guys, the car shows all around the country. That's He's right. got his book right here. <laughs> Hot Rod Chronicles. Where can I get this book? Uh, through Good Guys, I guess. They okay. still got some. I don't they know. Still was, got, you know, they got, they got cases of these sitting in a warehouse. <laughs> yeah, they got three or four. There's boxes of these sitting They're in a rare. They're rare. But it's, it's, it's uh, Gary started the uh, whole Good Guys deal. You, you've heard of them. They put out the catalog and, as I said, all the car shows. And this book features, a, oh, there's a Streamliner. Oh, was it? Oh, yeah, you found I it? So you, uh, and you've been a Chrysler guy from way back, huh? Yep, since high school days. Yeah, yeah. Is that the Streamliner there? No. Nope. No, that's not yours. No, nope. okay. wrong one. Okay. <laughs> but anyway, it's called uh, Good Guys Hot Rod Chronicles, the history of hot rodding's first family of fun. Uh, a lot of interesting stuff in here. But let's focus on uh, this car. Uh, you bought this car, what, three and a half years ago? Three and a half years ago, okay. out of Missouri. And uh, well, on let's... eBay. You bought it on eBay? On eBay. You bought it sight unseen? Sight unseen. And let me guess, it was much worse than you thought? <laughs> exactly. Wow. <laughs> so you're a car guy, been involved in cars your whole life, and you bought a car sight unseen. You yeah. know? Didn't want to spend that money for a plane ticket, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah, <laughs> why, yeah. Why do you, I'm sure it's fine. I'm so sure. How bad was it when you got it? It was, I guess, worse than bad. Yeah, yeah. And I should have just pushed it off in a ditch. Yeah, yeah. And covered it yeah. and walked away. No, but see, that's okay, because to me, uh, I, I like it when people buy something that's so far gone, you might as well resto mod it rather than a nice original car. Yeah, exactly. You know? I mean, exactly. I do that. If I find when I bought my uh, Oldsmobile Tornado, I paid eight hundred dollars for it. It was it was shot. It was it didn't run. It was all rusted out. So I don't feel as if I, I've ruined a classic. In other words, right. not that this is ruining a classic. Obviously, this is exactly as I said what I like. Well, let, let's get right to it. Let's start under the hood. Can you open the hood? I can do that. Let's take a look. I can you, do that. You'll be surprised at what this has for a drivetrain. Okay, that appears to be a Viper V10. Is that correct? Yep, <laughs> Viper V10, in person. Well, what a nice sanitary installation that is. And, uh, you know, the one thing we like to do on this uh, program is really... Uh, give credit to the guys who actually did the work and, and, and built these cars. Because uh, uh, you get to be our age and it's, uh, I don't want to do all this work myself. Let me find some, let's find that next generation of young guys. Uh, and let's, where's, where's Scott? Scott, come on in. How you doing? How are you? Now, what's the name of your shop? It's Hot Rods and Hobbies. Hot Rods and Hobbies. You're in Signal Hill? Correct. California, okay. Well, you got to put the website up there. Because if, if you're looking for somebody to do some really good work, these, these are the guys. I've, I've never seen uh, an installation as nicely done as this. Uh, so how did you guys hook up? Well, it, it kind of happened. I, I, I had an old friend of mine who was going to be involved in the project because he's a Mopar guy. Mm -hmm. And so I shipped the car up to him. Uh, we started there, and I wanted a Viper in it because it's, a Viper is very narrow and very long. Right. And this hood is very long. So got the Viper there and stuff and mocked the engine up into the stock chassis, and we shipped it up to Art Morrison enterprises up in Washington so he could do the chassis mm -hmm. with four-wheel disc brakes and and coilovers and so forth and so on and we got it back down to uh, Bob Bowder right. and uh, Bob started kind of messing with it and boy it needed all new floors and and just tons and tons and tons of metal work and enter Scott in his shop so I mean then it started and and Bob and I both said man this guy's unbelievable right. Stuff gets done in his shop, and when you walk in his shop, like I always say, there's nobody standing around drinking coffee, smoking cigarettes. They're all working, yeah, which yeah, is yeah. amazing, right, in today's world. Yeah, i got to try that here. Yeah. <laughs> and we also should explain, this is the Viper drivetrain out of that Viper truck. 
yes. with the automatic transmission. Yep. Because I know you have an automatic in this. Okay. And what you found a, a truck uh, that had been uh, damaged during an accident. Or wrecking something? yard. A wrecking, wrecking yard, yard package. Okay. Very good. Very good. So that way you get the engine, the transmission, the computers, and all that right. gizmos. You know, people think this front end has been extended, but that's exactly the way it looked back in the day. And I have to admit, uh, with the original fl flathead and the fluid drive, I never liked driving these. Nope. I always liked the look of them, but that, that fluid drive, you'd put your, and then take your foot off, and mm -hmm. uh, clunk, clunk, and it wasn't a fully automatic. You still had a clutch, so you had to use the clutch for first gear, and it was just not, there was so much slippage. They were comfortable once you're kind of floating down the road, but they weren't fun to drive. Whereas this, I imagine, is really fun to drive and, of course, has the classic look. Let's go into some of the details. Scott, tell us, uh, what was your biggest challenge in doing this? What was the hardest part? Uh, well, it came in boxes. Yeah. Basically, Morrison provided the chassis mm -hmm. with the motor sitting in it and the tranny sitting in it with all the coilovers front and rear, mm -hmm. independent suspension, uh, basically a nice chassis ready to rig, so to say. Then the body came, but it wasn't yet bolted to the chassis. Mm -hmm. Of course, we couldn't just bolt the body on because it had so much rust that it would have just felt, you know, fell right through. So we had to cut all the floors out. And then the next challenge was building a house backwards. Basically, we had all the wood already. Right. But it had nothing to bolt to. So we had to basically put the wood where we wanted it and get it fitted and gapped and then mount the body to the chassis thinking about the wood the whole time. Yeah. So trying to build a foundation was the hard part. If you've ever done any woodwork, you know just how hard this is to do. This is what they call steam bent. Is that correct? Yes. Yeah. Okay. And this is, how many of these do you crack and break before, before you have it right? I mean, this is mahogany, correct? It's either mahogany or walnut. I don't Wal remember. Mahogany or walnut. Okay. And uh, God, and how much is this weigh? This is a real piece of timber, isn't it? Yeah, yes. that door is probably 75 to 100 pounds, yeah. just the wood part alone. Right, the windows. right, right. Yeah, yeah. The quarter panel takes two people to pick up. Yeah. It's a giant slab. It's, it's like nine and a half feet long. Yeah. Now, the wheels are a bit of a giveaway that it might not be stocked. Those are 17s, right? Yes. Normally, this would have had, what, 15s? Yes. 15s with, with little... With a little two-piece, yeah, yeah, little yeah, two-piece yeah. subcaps, yeah. You yeah. don't know what brake fade is until you try to stop one of these on it. Right, head. right. This, it still weighs about, what, close to 5,000 pounds? Yes, 5,000. Okay, okay. Mm -hmm. And obviously you have, what, disc brakes all around, and uh, are, those, are those the Chrysler uh, wire wheels? Yes, you know? Chrysler wire wheels, and it yep. just tried to copy that same thing, only expand it from a 15 to a 17. Nice touches, and uh, normally these, these would be up here, huh, uh -huh. but you cut these down. Okay, these are the stock taillights. My favorite thing is the antenna. Look at the antenna. Keep your eye on that screw. There you go. That's a great touch. Notice it still's got, it still has the thread on it. That's great. Also, you've got the trunk opening hydraulically. Is that correct? Yes, electrically. <laughs> Good day, Mr. Bond. <laughs> I always like cars that are nicely done on the inside as well as the outside. In here, you have your, just pull that, there you go. You got your battery and everything in there. You got an amplifier for the stereos in there. Yeah. The battery, the uh, subwoofers are in there. You got all nice that stuff. Storage area. But these guys get older, they can't hear as well, so they need the big speakers. So exactly. You have that. exactly. And you got the uh, Optima battery, which I like because obviously there's no fluid in them, and they don't leak, and they don't the rest the inside of it. You don't get any fumes. God, just beautifully done, nicely done. Let's open the gas cap. A dealer accessory. There you go. That's pretty cool. Yeah, I thought that was great. And the top is electric as well? Yes. Let's see what that looks like. Okay. Try to keep the wrinkles out of it as best we know how. Well, we got the top down on the car and you get a chance to really appreciate the lines of the vehicle. You know, it's, it's amazing that uh, the car is built better than new in terms of fit and finish. I mean, the fact that you could never have gotten this level of detail. Uh, and look how nicely they've integrated the uh, steering column and the uh, automatic transmission uh, lever on the dash there. I always hate when I see resto mods and they have a modern, yes, you know, bolt-on billet stuff, gear shift lever, and you know. Well, or, this is the, actually the original shift knob. Yeah. And we still have it for the the factory air conditioning down there. Yeah, that's here, great. Calvent. That's fantastic. And then the stock radio is still there, even though there's a modern radio hiding, and it still lights up yeah. and does what it's supposed now, to do. Now, as I remember, see those little squares on the dashboard there? Didn't they used to give you stickers for your local radio stations? Oh, <laughs> I never knew what that. What they did was, and uh, I think in 49, um, 
you would, there were buttons there, and they, whatever area or country you lived in, they would give you the stickers for their AM stations in your area. And oh. you would put them in there, and you would just hit those buttons. Yeah, that was kind of cool. And uh, look at the Art Deco clock, the beautiful chrome. And uh, another feature this car has, which I don't imagine it had originally, is air conditioning, correct? Correct. Uh, and the, you can't see the air conditioning vents. Scott has integrated them. See, they're under there. What was normally there? What was there before? Nothing? That's where the factory dome lights were. So okay. we put them behind that. Yeah. So we didn't poke any extra holes and make it obvious. And the AC vent it just happens to fit in the exact same hole. Yeah, well, that's great. And the air conditioning blows down on you. Right. Uh, Scott, it's just a beautiful, beautiful job. You know, it's fun to see uh, guys, local guys, because you're local here in California, doing this level of work. This is really world class. You know, I wish Pebble Beach appreciated these kind of resto mods. You know, as much as um, I admire uh, the original type restorations, this is, uh, this has the same level of detail, level of uh, fit and finish as any car you'll see at Pebble Beach. And the nice thing is it drives and handles like a modern car. It isn't, a lot of times I see these sort of uh, fancy Pebble Beach type cars and they overheat, they don't really run right because I, for whatever reason, they just don't. They're show cars. Whereas this is a driver, right? You're going to drive this to Columbus, Ohio? From, yes. From here in California? Okay. Yes. To, and you're going to drive it to all the good guy shows, huh? Lots of them. Yeah, very good. Yeah, that's, really, that's what they're built for. It's really cool. And the nice thing is the wife will actually enjoy riding in this one, you know, so that's, that's kind of fun. You bet. Very cool. Can we, uh, can we fire it up and take it around the block? You bet you. Can. We can go anywhere you want to go. Have fun. This is what cruising is all about, but we need to get out of the way. Yeah, it goes good. Yeah. What I like about this, even though it has a Viper motor, it's quiet. It doesn't have glass packs on it because it's not that kind of car. It still weighs almost 5,000 pounds, but you've just got way, way more horsepower <laughs> than the car ever had when it was new. And of course, it stops better and handles better, and it's safer. So there's really no downside. It really does handle the drive very nicely. It really is a beautiful car, just the right color, period colors. And this woodwork, it's almost, you almost have to see it in person. I know we're filming this in high def, but you really have to see it in person to appreciate it. You know, as hard as paint work and woodwork is to do, chassis dynamics and getting it to handle is equally as hard. And you know, usually these kind of old cars, when you go over railroad tracks, you get that click, of, you get that wheel shake and it starts doing this on you. None of that here. This is tight. I mean, it feels like a, a, a modern production automobile. It's, uh, it's pretty amazing. And, What kind of horsepower we got here? About four and a quarter, something like that? Five, five oh five. You know, after a while you forget you're driving in a 60-year-old car. I mean, it rides and handles great. It does the fact you can drive it from where it's pleasant in California to Columbus, Ohio. That's fantastic. You really get the best of both worlds. Boy, there's a nice driving car. You know, the real trick to these is don't ever get them wet. This wood will last forever as long as you don't leave it out in the sun too much or, or wash the car and get wood in between the joints because then it gets wet and the wood expands and it cracks. So, you know, always use some like uh, Meguiar's detail spray, that kind of stuff when you when you take care of these kind of cars. Oh. Got a real panoramic view inside this thing. Beautiful dashboard. Actually, the speedometer is not working right now, uh, but other than that, everything else seems to be fine. Got your radio here. It's just a beautiful dashboard to look at. I love a split windshield. I know when the full-length windshield came out in the 50s, it was pretty amazing, but to me, I always just like a split windshield for some reason. As I said before, you've got a modern telescopic steering wheel here that flips up. 
You can adjust it any way you want. This is the kind of car when you get home, you realize there's a Toyota Corolla crushed up under the fender well. You gotta, you gotta scrape it out. <laughs> Make sure the cops aren't around when you're doing a burnout. <laughs> Once again, I want to thank Gary and, of course, Scott. You know, it's great to see young guys uh, getting involved in the hobby because uh, a lot of times most of the guys have hair the way uh, same color as Gary and I do. So it's uh, on it. it's kind of nice to see young people. And it's nice to know that young guys can make a good living doing this kind of stuff. I mean, this is real quality work. It's not cheap, but it's it's perfection. And that's really the important part because this is a car that Gary will have the rest of his life. It's beautifully done, it's tight, it's strong. Scott, congratulations, my friend. Thank you, Jay. And uh, keep up the good work. We'll see you guys next week.